Hi, Jennifer. Um, you're from Beyond Expectations. I, I just wondered whether you could tell me a little bit about the business that you're in. The business okay. that you run. Yeah, well, my business is um, predominantly an events company. And what we actually do is we decorate for various events. That is mostly weddings, but we, we do all sorts of events like birthday parties, christenings, anniversary parties, kids parties, all different things. Um, and we used to have the shop as well. So there was like two strands to the business. There was the retail side of the business where we sold all the decorations um, and cake supplies and floristry supplies. And then the other strand, like I said, is we actually went on site and decorated the customers as well. Um, now the shop has closed, um, but we mainly do all the decoration, decorating for furniture. So um, we do corporate events, um, floral structures, um, chair covers for parties, table centerpieces, and then for weddings we do all the floral arrangements and make lots of bouquets and so on for brides. So in a nutshell, that's what we do, that's what the business is. Okay. And when I first came into your shop, you had a, a wonderful shop in Park Street in Croydon, and when I first came into you and approached you about maybe doing, a, having a little chat at first with Donna and Lucy, um, yep. what made you say yes? Interesting. I said yes because I am a people's person and I do like working with people. Um, and with Dana and Lucy, they sort of reminded me very much of myself, you know, two young, very ambitious women who wanted to, well, they had an interest um, and they wanted to create a business out of their interest or hobby, if you like. Um, and because I, I really like working with people and with young people, I like sort of teaching, imparting some of my knowledge. And it just seemed right. Um, I suppose given the fact that they both liked um, aspects of my own industry, it, it was just sort of automatic, really. I, I've got information to give, I've got advice to give, and sort of, um, sort of needing some guidance, it, it just seemed right. And, and so I was quite happy to get involved and to help them build their dreams, basically. Especially as I've been there from the very beginning. And so obviously I've got some advice that I could give over to them that would then help them on their way to building their dreams and starting their own business. So I, I think mainly that's, that's probably why I said yes. <laughs> And, and did you have any expectations uh, about the mentoring? And, and, and if you did, 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 he, did he actually meet those expectations? Because it's been a, an interesting road. It, yeah, it has. Um, I must admit, I didn't actually have any sort of preconceived expectations or ideas. I mean, it was just when you approached me, and of course, when I met the two young ladies, it, it I just took it on, but not really um, expecting a uh, sort of approach or um, a process or, or anything like that. It, it, I, I didn't really have any kind of expectations at, at all, really. Um, it was a matter of sort of just working along, along with them, sort of speaking to them, finding out their own ideas and what they wanted. Um, what their interests were, what skill sets they had, and then sort of building on that as we went along. Um, I think because I was sort of used to speaking to a lot of people, having the shop anyway, and a lot of customers would come in and ask me questions and ask me for guidance, ask me how you do this and how you do that. It was sort of second nature to me. So when I started to work with Lucy and um, Dana, um, no, I didn't, didn't really have any expectations. But as we went along, um, I began to realise a lot of things. I, I learned a lot of things from them. For a start, 
um, I was able to sort of realise that um, they have, each of them had their different skills, they had their different ambitions, they had different ideas, um, but I needed to approach each of them in a different way, so I needed to use a different process in teaching or working with each of them to sort of um, develop them and, and um, sort of get where they wanted to be or, or or sort of work with them along the sort of roads to teach them. Um, so for me, it, I actually learned quite a lot in the process. Um, and, and then sort of found that actually it's, it, 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 it's quite an interesting process and, you know, it, it, it develops as you go along. So, yeah, I, I didn't start out with any sort of qualification at all, really. With, with what you were doing, you were incredibly challenging at times. And I think that was really good. I mean, uh, there was one time with Donna that you really challenged her about her um, care of her flowers and what she was doing and charging and, and things like that. And that was really quite fresh because most of the time they weren't, they hadn't been challenged. and um did you realize what an impact you actually made by challenging them on 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 some of the things that you did did you realize what an impact that had made on them no in, in all honesty no not not at that point um i think i did challenge them and uh, because you know when when they approached me they approached me with an idea that they wanted to build a business. And in as much as they were starting from their hobby or their interest, ultimately they still wanted to build a business. So for me, um, to, to work with them, I had to prepare them for the real world, the real business world. It is a challenge and everything you do when you're actually building your business is real and it can be very challenging. And coming from where they were coming from as well, sort of um, fresh to, to their industries, yes, they had their ideas, um, and yes, they had some skills, but they didn't necessarily know, particularly, well, well, Dana in particular, didn't actually know what you know what the process would entail so for me i had to be real because what they were doing was real i had i wanted them to understand that okay you you can choose you can have a hobby and it can remain as a hobby or you can build a business from your hobby and make some money from that this is going to be your livelihood so in that respect, if they're choosing to build a business, as they said that this was their interest, then you know they had to be prepared to face the challenge. I wasn't prepared to sort of um, mollycoddle Donna, nor Lucy, nor sugarcoat, you know how challenging it would be. I had to put them in the real world and make them fully understand that okay this is what it's going to be like. You, you need to develop skills, you need to um, maintain good practices, you need to develop customer service skills, you need to know about budgeting, about pricing. Um, there's just lots of things that they actually needed to take on board if they were really going to put this uh, hobby into a successful business. Um, and I think also that's it's also just my nature, really. If I'm teaching, then mm. yes, I, I want to get the best out of people. So um, I will set the challenges. I will make them understand that this is real. You're in the real world, and this is what it's going to be. Sometimes it's going to be an uphill climb, um, but there's going to be the rewards at the end of it. And I could only encourage them 
challenge them so that they could develop the necessary skills to get where they want to be. I, th I think it certainly worked. I mean, if, if you look at the time when they did a testimony for you for a competition, and it comes out across, and that is that even though you challenged them, they'd actually responded not only to the challenge, but actually they enjoyed the fact that you challenged them. And they, they actually thought that what was good is that you valued them, that you, you, ha you had a belief in them, which was good. And Donna often talks to me about the fact that you told her at times that her designs were a bit old fashioned and that she needed to get onto Pinterest. And, and she says a lot about the fact my designs now are a lot more modern and it's a lot more contemporary. And, 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 and I think that is, but I think it's really good. And I think all businesses probably need to have that sort of peer interest with each other of, of being able to someone say, yes, but why don't you try that? Almost like a critical friend. And I think that's what you came across for me as a real critical friend of saying, yes, oh. but you can do it this way. And if you did it this way, you'll earn more money. Charging more money for your flowers. It's the right thing to do. Making sure you have a good supplier for your flowers. It's the right thing to do. Which sort of brings me up to another question. You did one of the sort of bravest things I think I, I, I never expected any, any, anyone to do is when you gave over your shop for a while, uh, Valentine's Day and uh, Mother's Day to allow yeah. Donna to test trade. Yeah. Um, but uh, you didn't only just do that, you opened her, her, her credit line as regards the flowers as well, um, yeah. which I think was incredible. Not only was it incredibly brave, I think it sort of pushed her into being, well, this could n never happen to actually, I really want this to happen. Um, what made you actually do that again? Because that, that's a bit of, you didn't have to do that. That was really something that came from you. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I mean, again, coming back to the challenge, I mean, this had to be real for Diana, and she had to really understand every aspect of running a business. Now, if she had gone on a business course, she would have, you know, gained all the theory, but she wouldn't have had the practical side. And for her, she really needed that. And so when I opened up the shop to her, I just thought this actually, the timing was perfect because she's interested in running a floral business. Um, Valentine's Day and Mother's Day are the two biggest days in the floral industry calendar. And no other days that where you can make more money than those two. So the timing was actually perfect. We then decided, okay, Valentine's Day is coming up. She now needs to be the customer interface. So ultimately she needed to sell those bouquets that she was, we were gonna have her make. So then um, when we asked her about where she actually gets her supplies from, she was telling me about some retail um, she purchases her products from. And I, as a business person, that wouldn't do because it wouldn't make her price competitive. So this is why I introduced her to the wholesaler and had her set up a credit agreement. And I also introduced her to another one of my suppliers where she could get all the other non-live uh, products. So we set her up there and we helped her pick out all her products. We taught her how to quantify. Um, so first she had to decide what bouquet she was going to make, then she needed to quantify that. That then enabled her to price those products. And then she had to work out uh, what price she was going to sell them at. And then she could work out more or less what her profit was. So we put her through that, all that training and then we brought her in the shop and we had her actually then sell her products. That did a number of things for her because it meant that she could one, get the experience of selling face to face, talking with her customer, and then that would help her develop her sales pitch and her selling skills, which, you know, in theory, she, she couldn't have done otherwise. So this was the reason behind actually bringing her in. We knew that um, 
the market was there for her because it was coming up to Valentine's Day and Mother's Day. It was Mother's Day shortly after Valentine's. So we knew that that would give her um, the opportunity to really go out there, make her products and sell them. So, yeah, I mean, that, that was the reason behind it. Um, to be honest, um, I think with Dana, I, I, I had already seen her interest. She, she was very, very ambitious. She had a lot of ideas, but in actual fact, bringing her into the shop and allowing her to go through that process, it just helped her to build, build on her ideas, test her own ability, and develop her customer skills and her sales skills as well. And it, uh, she did well. She did very, very well out. I, I, I remember when I came back in because I'd been away for Valentine's Day. And the first thing she said to me is, "I sold, I sold flowers to to, to strange men," <laughs> and, and she, and, and and this was from Donna, who, you know, self-confessed has autism, does not feel comfortable about going out and and, and selling, and you could see from that moment of time is, she still felt shy but she didn't feel shy around her product and from there she has become someone who can get up and speak to people yeah. does sell herself it made a massive difference that, that those two weeks and also it showed that not only had she got a hobby but she actually could work hard it showed it was very hard work yeah yeah and, and 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 i think that was a bit that impressed me is that she knew there was things that were missing and the bit where she took things on the chin the things that you said to her you need to care for your flowers she actually then did something positive about it she actually signed up on a course to actually have better flower uh, <laughs> better flower care you can tell her i know nothing about flowers but you know again you know it was that type of thing is i could see her coming back from being very feeling small and insignificant and you could see she was walking 10 feet tall and i have a picture of her just at that time where she was launched uh, someone else was launching a business and she did all the flowers and she oh. looked a million dollars and it's because she you could see the confidence in her and that was absolutely that and I, i'm perfectly sure that was because of those two weeks yeah she um it was so funny because um at first we had her selling within the shop and then I decided, no, actually, she's, she's really got to go out there and approach the customer rather than wait for the customer to come into the shop to ask about the flower. So what we did was we, we put her outside to then approach people on the street as they were passing. Um, and this actually would help her develop, one, her self-confidence, and secondly, um, it means that she's being proactive instead of reactive. Mm. So it, it means that she, she's pushing her sales. So <laughs> we, um, we monitored from in the shop because, of course, we had the big window. So we, she was safe. We, we watched her. Uh, and what we did with the money, she, we, we didn't allow her to, to take money on the street. We allowed her to sell on the street, but then she would send the customer into the shop with their purchase and they would pay in the shop. Um, so, so in that respect, we kept her you know, quite safe so she didn't have to ma manage money on the street as well. But the approach was hers. And um, the good thing with Dana is that, you know, you, you will guide her and advise her and she will listen. And that, that spoke volumes to me. She never... Um, she never refused to it to do anything that I suggested to her. She always took it on board and that told me that she's very keen, she's very ambitious and she's ready to learn. Mm. Um, she was eager to learn. And that in itself was enough to, um, was, it was a good basis for her to really build her business. The other part she just needed to learn, you know, we have a saying, recruit for attitude, train for skill. Mm. Her attitude was right, and you know we we knew that it it was there with Donna. She just needed that helping hand, that guidance, to put her on the right track and to just fill in the gaps 
that she probably wouldn't have learned on any business course. That's what we did with her. And, you know, she did the rest. All we did really was bring out her skills that she had, the underlying skills, and we just helped her develop them really. Oh, if you don't know, you, you on both of you know, Lucy with her, her blogging and again, her, her going from wanting to become a wedding planner to being doing blogging and, and talking about weddings, which has been quite good fun with her. It's and, and, and still work in progress. And, and Donna, you, you've made such an impact and, and it's an impact I couldn't have made. It's an impact I could help and I could move things along. But without you as a business owner to have it from a different perspective, help re really, I think, seal that impact. I mean, we may have got there, but he would have got there. And certainly, I think, when you're looking at learning disabilities and autism, really having a business owner really does help. Uh, that was a, That's my view, is that, you know, yeah. it, it, it's, it's that bit where I thought you, because you believed, in them and what you just said i think that made it a tremendous deal of difference to them well you see that's i think where it where you know people like myself who are in the line of business can help because like you said you could only teach so much and it, it's just the same as if you know anybody is on a business course for instance there's so much that they can learn so there's all the theory that they can learn which is great because they can take that on board. But they do need somewhere then to put that theory into practice. So this is where businesses like mine will come, um, come in, you know, really useful. Because once that person has that opportunity to then put what they've learned into practice and further develop their skills, so be in the front line, um, then you're then combining, you know, both of those learning curves together and then that person is be able to that person is then able to obviously have more you know learn more and then that person is then be able will be able to then put everything into some sort of practice um without the practical it, it is very very difficult um you to learn something and then be out on your own suddenly totally on your own from scratch is very difficult but if you've got a learning curve and, and you're able to have someone hold your hand and take you through the process it is it is much easier because that person can then gain confidence along the way particularly people like Donna and Lucy because obviously they both had um, they both have uh, disabilities to deal with as well so their learning could be different and it's a matter of when I was working with them, it's learning their different styles, learning different learning styles for each of them. So my approach um, had to adapt for each of them. The pace at which they learned was different. Um, so, you know, it, it, it means for the, for the young person who's just starting out in business, it means that they have an opportunity to, to gradually develop at a pace that is comfortable to them. Um, and in that, in so doing, they then, you know, can gain more confidence and probably be more successful, you know, at, at the end, rather than just dive in the deep end and, and, and maybe, you know, fail. I, I can tell um, you more. Um, I get a lot of, quite a lot of time, people are quite negative when I, you know, they say, well, you know, what's the point of approaching a business owner? What's in it for them? And it's a sort of question I'd, I'd like to ask you is, you know, what was in it for you as, as such? Because uh, I think there is a lot in it for you personally. Um, and I think, you know, I'd like people to actually understand that in a way. Well, everything's about money. And uh, my, the game, my game wasn't monetary. Um, it was very rewarding working with these two young women, um, I actually learned a lot from both. Um, I actually realised some skills that I had, you know, I probably didn't realise before that I had. Um, it gave me 
some real pleasure actually working with both of them. Um, it's really, especially when I had to really understand how each of them learn things um, and the, the, the different approach I had to take with each of them. I, I mean, it was really, really interesting. But I think the reward as well um, is knowing that those two women, especially Donna, because what, what Donna has done is more sort of tangible. I, I can see it. Um, you know, it's the, from the experience and the advice that she got from me, um, which has put her where she is today. And she's really happy. Mm. Um, she's really happy with where she's at at the moment. And that's made me really happy. I mean, it, it just makes me feel that, wow, you, you know, that little bit of input that I have has helped somebody else develop what will go on to be a successful business. Yeah. You've changed her life. No doubt about that's, it. You, 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 you've, actually, you've actually changed her life. No doubt about it. In, in, the, in a really positive sense, of she won't want to have things given to her she knows she can go out and get it and that's a huge difference with her um probably don't need to ask this question but yeah i think in a way is i was going to ask you do you think it's been worthwhile but i think you probably have already answered that one it's been very worthwhile it's good to know that she's in the garden center now she's there four days a week she told me that she had a really good Valentine's Day. Last Christmas was very good for her. Valentine's Day was really good for her. Mother's Day was good, but obviously it was a little less due to the current situation that we're in now. Which we're all in at the minute. That we're all in. But it's just good to know that she has found her place in the market and uh, she, she really loves what she's doing. She's there four days a week, running her own business quite successfully. And she can only grow from there. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, when I think about when I was starting, I didn't have that helping hand. I had to learn everything that I had to learn from scratch. I made some mistakes along the way. I suppose a lot of us entrepreneurs have made some very, you know, big financial mistakes. But it's rewarding when you know that you've managed to help somebody build their business. And... Yes, they'll probably make some mistakes along the way, but you've sort of um, minimised some of those mistakes. And you've taught them a lot from the outside. Um, and, and they have that as um, sort of a foundation on which to build and grow from that. And for me, that's the rewards of, of you know, taking on um, both Dana and um, Lucy. Um, and I just hope, you know, that they continue. And in time, I mean, they could turn to somebody else and then impart some knowledge as, they grow, as they've grown. They will impart some of their knowledge onto somebody, you know, years to come who's but just starting out. It might be of interest to you in the, in the project that I've been in is they've already imported knowledge to people from Chile to Japan, Malaysia and, and, and Greece. So she, Donna has already been a star already in, in doing this. And, People are, are being amazed of the things that she has done, and that, and and she's managed also to make sure that everyone has her Instagram page, and and such like. Um, a counterpart of this, I'm hoping to do a, an interview with Donna, much the same way. Um, mm -hmm. So hopefully we can can do something similar. Do you have anything else to add? Because I I think on my we've got less than five minutes left. So do you have anything to um, add? Yeah, I think you know. I think encourage um, other businesses to, to partake in, in, you know, such a process. I know it is time consuming and I think with all the business owners that is one of the things that we're all very conscious of. We have very little time. But the little time that you do spend just, you know, working with somebody else, developing somebody else, it, it could be so big. It, like you say, it could be a life changer. So even if it's a, an hour a week, two hours a week, it's well worth it. And if you can do that, then, um, yeah, uh, you know, you, you could consider your job well done. Oh, Jennifer, I can't, you know, I really can't thank you for all the help that Beyond Expectations. Um, 
I thought your, 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 your business was fantastic before, but after that, I've always sort of make sure that everyone who's interested in about weddings to make sure that they, they visit your site. And I'm, oh, I'm you. sure you won't mind me if I make sure that people will be able to see your um, Facebook page and your, your website underneath this, if I can get the subtitles correct for it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Instagram, we're on Instagram as well. Right, so, I'll, yeah, I'll that'll make sure. Be but, but seriously, you know, thank you so much from all at Sayers Employment, you know, and you, you, you made such a huge difference.